All right, Math 1, Unit 2A, Point 9, and I'm also going to go over Point 10, or Section 10 in this video. So starting off with number one, um, we're supposed to graph the image of the figure using the transformation given, and this one we're doing dilations. Dilations are stretching or shrinking, or making bigger or making smaller the, the shape. So this one, we're dilating by a factor of one and a half. So we're going to make it one and a half times bigger, right? If there's one, let me see if there's one here. Well, none of these are it. But if there's something that's like um, 0.5 or 0.25 or 0.75, anything less than one, it's going to get smaller. Anything bigger than one, it's going to get bigger. So for starting off, we need a formula point for this. And the formula point is going to be you take x and y and you send them to ax and ay, where a is the dilation factor. So in this case, A is 1.5. So starting off, um, almost all of these, we're gonna need to list the points. So I'm not gonna actually do all the problems on these because actually section nine and section 10 are very, very similar. Um, so starting off, we'll look at, sec uh, at point C. C is at one, negative one. So I'm going to send it to C prime, which is going to be 1 times 1 1.5 and negative 1 times 1 1.5. So C prime is negative, oh, not negative. It's 1.5, negative 1 1.5. So it's going to have a point down here. D is at, what is that going to be, 3, 3? So D prime, I'm going to take 3 times 1.5. And what's that going to be? Is that 4.5? I'm thinking it's 4.5. Let me type that in just to make sure. 3 times 1.5 is going to be 4.5. Yeah. So D prime is at 4.5, 4.5. So there's my D prime. E is at negative 2, 2. So E prime is going to be, well, let's take negative 2 times 1.5, and that gives me negative 3. And then 2 times 1.5 gives me positive 3. So e, e prime will be right there. And lastly, we have F prime, or F. F is at negative 3, negative 2. F prime is going to be at negative 3 times 1.5 is negative 4.5. And then negative 2 times 1.5 is going to be negative 3. Oops. There we are. So here's our new shape. All right. They should look very similar. It should look like you can just like zoom in on your page and they'd be the same, the same size. All right. Let's look at another. I'm going to skip number 2 and we're going to go on to number number 3. This one's a dilation of three. So we're gonna multiply all the points by, by three. So let's look at T. T is at negative one, negative one. Whenever we multiply by three, T prime, we're gonna have negative one times three is gonna be negative three and another negative three. So here's gonna be T prime. V is at one, negative one. So V prime, whenever I multiply by 3, because we're dilating by 3, it'll be at 3, negative 3. And then lastly, we have U. U is at 0, 1. So U, if U, U prime will be at 0, 3, right up there. Now we just connect the dots. And there's our shape. So hopefully that's pretty easy. A lot of people have told me that they did this this last year. So let's look at number five. Number five, we're supposed to just find the coordinates of the new transformation. Find the coordinates of the new transfer of the new transformation. Last one we were supposed to graph. So really, this one's a little bit easier than the last one. We get to stop at this step here. All right. So I'm just going to do two problems from it. Um, G, I'm just going to list all my points first. Um, G is at negative 2, negative 1. I is at 2, 1. 
and h is at 0, 2. Now for our next step, I'm going to have to multiply by something. I'm going to be multiplying by 2, right, because we're dilating by 2. It's going to get 2 times bigger. So g prime is going to be negative 4, negative 2. i prime is at 4, 1, 4, 2. And h prime is going to be at 0, 4. That's that. You can graph it if you want, but you don't have to. Number seven. We'll look at, let me list my points. E is at negative two, negative one. H is at negative one, one. G is at negative one, two. And F is at two, two. Now this time I'm gonna be multiplying by two again. Right, it's just that two that they have they have listed there, right? So in number eight, we'd multiply by one point five. So I have all my points listed. Now I'm just going to multiply each of the coordinates by two. So e prime will be at negative four, negative two. H prime will be at negative two, two. G prime will be at negative two, four. And f prime will be at four, four. All, right. All I did was I multiplied each coordinate by two. All right, so that's section nine. Um, those are the, That's what the homework is going to be like. Let's look at section 10. It'll be very similar. So section 10, oops, I've already written on this apparently. Oh, this is still section nine. There we are. Now we're at section 10. All right. This one, we're supposed to write the rule to describe the transformation. Um, just like before, we don't really need more than one. We just need one point. So I'm going to look at my point Q. So somehow, we're really, we only need one piece of the point. So let's look at the negative 1 and the negative 1.5. Now, notice here that we couldn't use 0, right? Because we, we wouldn't know what we multiplied by, right? Right here, we're trying to find how... What could we multiply by to get negative 1.5? So one way to look at this would be that um, A is your dilation factor. Okay. We'll say that X is negative 1, right? That's your beginning. AX is negative 1.5. Okay. So I grabbed this 1.5 as AX from the second thing. And I grabbed my x is negative 1 from the first, right? Or, or you could substitute in y if you wanted to use your y coordinate. And I'm just going to plug in my x and solve for my, my a. So I have a times negative 1 is negative 1.5. So dividing by negative 1, a is going to be 1.5. So we have a dilation by 1.5. And you're welcome to check the other points, and you'll find that, that is true for all of them. So let's look at number two. Um, this time, let's look at a y coordinate just because. Um, so here we look at this negative two and this negative four. It should be pretty easy right now to see what did we dilate by. Um, we should be able to see that we dilated by two, right? It multiplied by two. Uh, I'm still going to write it out and do the math. That way, if they um, aren't as easy as this one, we're still able to, to do it. Um, so for starters, we have, um, just like last time, well, y is going to be negative 2, right? That's our original point. A, y, our dilation factor times y is negative 4. So I'm going to plug in. A times negative 2 is negative 4. So A is 2, right? I divided by negative 2 there. And that's what we dilated by. So we have a di dilation by 2. And I don't think that's how you spell dilation. D-I-L-A-T-I-O-N. Oh, okay. Apparently so. So that's our answer for number 2. All right. Let's look at number 3. Oops. Um, let's look at the y-coordinates of G. Oops. 
we'll look at that negative 2 and that negative 0 0.5. So we know that y, the original y, is negative 2. The new y, or a times y, is negative 0 0.5. So now I plug in and I say, well, a times negative 2 is negative 0 0.5. Now here we might need a, a calculator because um, I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. And since it's a decimal, I'm just going to type that in my calculator. Um, we know that the negative on top and the negative on bottom are going to cancel. So I'm going to type in 0 0.5 divided by 2, and I get 0 0.25. So a equals 0 0.25 which some of you will recognize is that that is 1 over 4, right? So we do, you could either say 0.25 or you could say 1 over 4. CUDA works will normally list it as a decimal. So we're going to say dilation by 0 0.25. All right. And lastly, number four, um, this one. We can see it right away, hopefully. Or at least I'm able to see it right away. We have L is at negative 1, and it ends up at negative 2. So what happened there? Um, if we don't see that, let's look at another one. Um, we have K. K starts off at 2, and it goes to 4. Right, so it dilated by 2. Right? It multiplied everything by 2. If you're able to see that immediately, I welcome you to just do the problem like that. If not, you can do it the long way like what I've been showing you. So let's look at the back side. Um, we're supposed to find the coordinates of the vertices of each figure after the given transformation. Well, this is just like the back side of section 9. right? So section 9, they gave you a graph. This time, they gave us the points. It's actually going to be easier now. So I'm only going to do a couple of these problems. We'll start off by trying to find V prime. V prime, well, we've already got V listed. We know that we're dilating by 2, so we're going to multiply each of those coordinates by 2. So V prime will be at negative 4, negative 2, right? And it's multiplied by 2. W prime will be at negative 4, 2. X prime will be at 0, 2. And Y prime will be at 4, 0. Right. I multiplied each of those by 2. Let's look at another one. Number 6. Dilation of one and a half about the origin. And I don't know if I've talked about this. It talks about about the origin. That means that we're stretching or shrinking it from the perspective of the, the spot where the axes touch, right, at zero, zero. Um, all of them that we do will be about the origin. Um, dilation of one and a half. So we're going to be multiplying by one and a half. So I prime is going to be, well, negative two times one and a half is going to be negative three. And then 1 times 1 and a half is 1.5. J prime, negative 2 times 1.5 is negative 3. 3 times 1.5 is 4.5. Right. You're welcome to type all these in your calculator unless you are able to just do them in your head. I've done enough, I've done enough of these problems to where I um, just kind of see them now. Um, K prime, I start at 3 times 1.5 is going to be 4.5. 1 times 1.5 is going to be 1.5. And then lastly, we have, we have L prime, which is going to be 3, negative 3. All right, that's how we do these. Um, the last two were very, very similar. Um, I don't think I'm going to do those because I think you'll be able to do them. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and um, good luck.